expecting the Russian president to meet with the Russian Security Council members. However, we understand from the words of the Kremlin spokesperson that there will be no um, tete -a -tete meetings between the president and some of the members, including the uh, defense minister, Sergei Shoigu. So it's unclear what results this meeting will yield, but certainly many are expecting Russia to announce some of the steps in response to the terrorist attack, as it has been now labeled by the Russian investigators, it has been carried out against the Crimean breach. Now, Russia says it was a deliberate attack against the civilian infrastructure, which is critical to the Russian Federation. And of course, they say that in this attack, Kyiv used not only Ukrainian uh, nationals, but also Russian nationals and some foreign nationals who helped to prepare this attack. So certainly, some of the steps are expected to come of this meeting. However, the Kremlin has ruled out the possibility saying that, uh, of use of the nuclear weapons, saying that it was an incorrect wording of the question whether this attack falls under the premises when the nuclear weapons could be used under the Russian military doctrine. So, uh, again, we're not sure what sort of result will come out, but definitely some of the Russian lawmakers have been saying that the response to these attacks should be harsh, and some of them have been even calling, but even before probably the, um, the, the terrorist attack, they have been calling for the strikes against the command centers. So, certainly we are expecting this meeting to yield some results and to be um, made public. Parts of the motorway have collapsed. However, the National Anti-Terror Committee has said that the motorway sections of the bridge have partially collapsed, but the arch over the land part of the bridge has not been damaged. So it's not clear how long it will take to restore the connection and to restore the bridge, according to the Kremlin. We also understand that the Russian president has set up a governmental commission to, uh, in connection with what has happened there. However, the head of Crimea also said that there was uh, the ferry connection and um being set up and these will start operational uh, starting Saturday so there will be at least four to five ferries that will be working there in order to provide for all the necessary stuff for the peninsula at the same time we have heard the local officials there saying that they have enough uh, supplies of fuel to last for at least 40 days enough supplies of food but people who live on that peninsula have been reported on the social media as uh, stockpiling uh, with the food and stock buying with all that stuff particularly uh, when it comes to fuel. Well, so far the situation is still developing. We understand from the officials that the fire has been extinguished. But of course, the Russian lawmakers have all said that this move will require a tough response from the Russian Federation. It's on Friday, we've heard the message of the Russian president, Vladimir Putin, who said that these four territories are within Russia forever. However, he extended his offer to the Ukrainian side, saying that uh, the there, are, there is the demand for the negotiations. However, he said that Kiev should return to the negotiating table. The, the sooner the better, because it will be easier to find an agreement uh, as soon as possible. However, indeed, we have seen Kiev saying that they are willing to join NATO now and uh, applying for accelerated membership. And Russia has said before that it was one of the things which triggered Russia's decision to start the special military operation. At the same time, Kiev now is shutting the door to diplomacy and Moscow says that they will be waiting until Kiev actually changes its mind because the perception here in Moscow is that it is not Kiev that is making decisions on negotiations but what Moscow describes as Western curators. At the same time, we have seen this uh, situation on the ground and uh, we understand that some of the reservists uh, that have been gathered and drafted up in this partial military, uh, in, in this partial mobilization, they have already been deployed to the uh, territory where the special military operation is going on, according to the Russian defense minister, who said that they are now there to be prepared to deal with the military equipment and so on. So definitely we are seeing the change in the tactics in, by the Russian side, but of course we have seen the change of the tactics by the Ukrainian side and many of the local officials have now said that uh, the fighters that they are fighting with on the Ukrainian side are no longer Ukrainian. Those are the mercenaries that are coming from the Eastern European countries um, mostly and that have been trained there and the equipment is only the one that has been provided by NATO.
We are expecting the return of those territories. But then again, there should be the consultations with the local population, according to the Kremlin, whether they would like to join the Russian Federation. And um, an interesting point here is, of course, uh, the fact that uh, Russia has said before that once those territories are within Russia, Russia will consider any attack against them as an attack against Russia. So certainly this is one of the issues that is on the mind of everyone. However, Russia has said that no major announcements uh, are planned for the Russian president and the status of the special military operation remains the same. So there are no plans to change it into what could become the counter-terrorism operation. We are expecting the return of those terrorists. The heads of these territories, some of them, have already appealed to the Russian president, uh, asking to incorporate those territories into the Russian Federation. Um, we also understand, as it was promised by the Kremlin before the process of admitting this territory, so the decree made it the federal property of the Russian Federation. So now we understand there will be this uh, company under the supervision of Russia's Rosatom. The company uh, will operate uh, all of the functions of uh, the Zaporozhye nuclear power plant. It will be headed by the former chief engineer of Balaklavska nuclear power plant. So we understand that now there will be the assessments of the infrastructure as well as the damage done to the infrastructure in order to see what should happen to this uh, power plant station. Next, what we understand is that the local officials there in uh, the Parogia say that the, um, there is the need of this power plant station to serve the needs of the people who live there. But the premises here is that since uh, the Parogia is now uh, considered the Russian region, so it should be serving the needs of the region. We also understand that people who have been working at this nuclear power plant station will be hired by this new company uh, with uh, saving their social benefits, saving their um, um, their salaries. So all these work will uh, be done uh, shortly. We also expect the head of the IAEA, Rafael Grossi, to visit Moscow in the coming days, as he's now uh, due to visit Kiev. And the focus of these discussions will be the safety of the operations of the Zaporozhye nuclear power plant, because Russia has said before that it is only possible to restart all of the blocks only if there is no shelling.